this guy is working? Yeah. Okay. So number one, standing room only. Don't look around. 1,200 people in this room. I'm really gracious now. Thank you guys for coming out to see me. But so what we're going to talk about is time, right? Time. Um, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm not here to sell third party or anything like that. But back in July of 2019, I was working for Rush University. I was a supervisor uh, for a small shop of three guys. I've been chasing manager for about five years as an in-house program. Trimedics came in the door and I we implemented into Trimedics and we had a very successful implementation. And they invited me to go downtown to Rush University from a 210 bed hospital to a 710 bed teaching hospital from three technicians to 23 technicians. And at the time, I had actually just adopted my newborn son. So I had a new kid who's baby was an infant. And also at the time, we decided we were going to move. So we decided to move to a new house, a much larger house. And I wasn't the only professional in the family. So my wife is, I'm married up. I'll, I'll just say that. My wife is incredible. She's actually an award-winning designer in Chicago. And I have this funny story I like to talk, tell about her. We're, we're sitting at breakfast, and I pick up one of the magazines that's sitting on the table. And I open it, and I'm like, you're in this magazine. She didn't tell me that. And she's like, what, what is that? How's it be? Okay, I'm in that. And I, and I told her, I was like, this must be what it's like to be married to Beyonce, right? So... The reason I tell you that is because my decision to go to that next level was not mutual. Because I knew that we had children. I knew that we had a, a new house. And I, had, I knew I had a professional wife. And I, I heard people say, hey, and we've seen it in our career field, divorces, right? Divorces because we acted alone in our decisions about time management. I stopped and asked my wife, hey, this is what this is. This is the commitment. Are you on board with me? And she said, yes. And that was part of my success, okay? So I showed up at Rush University and I walked up. It's a huge hospital in the medical district of Chicago. And I stood before this monstrous towering hospital and I'd like to think all of us have stood before a hospital and said, oh my God, how am I going to get into this, right? And within two weeks, I was ready to quit because I hadn't developed myself. I hadn't looked at how am I going to manage this astronomical amount of work that's about to come my way. So one realization that I came to Nobody's going to fix it for me. Nobody's going to come to you and say, hey, go home. It's five o'clock, go home, right? I was working until till five o'clock, going home and putting my kid to bed and then coming back to work and working until midnight every single day. Nobody stopped me. I was my own worst enemy. And so finally one day I said, it's me. I, I'm the one now who's going to change things. So... Let's start off first with, so number one, time to find, okay? Um, we're gonna look at a very well-known time management symbolism, which is the jar, right? The stones, the rocks, the sand, you try to throw them in, and try to get them all fit. Now, I don't say one thing, a thief is worth a hundred philosophers. So a lot of the information I'm gonna share with you, I stole, Google's an amazing tool. Right, but there are some things that are very original in this that it was actually just me sitting around thinking and trying to add new scenarios. We'll talk about the perception of time, which was great because if you were in the BA or the um, the virtual reality class where we talked about time compression, like it's right in this. Okay, we'll discuss what changes your perception of time. Why it matters. Too much to do, how do you prioritize that? How do you manage your calendar? And number one, master your tools. 
I don't know how many times I review and one-on-one -on -one with technicians and I talk about repair like it's an art. Communication like it's an art. You know, we should be mastering these skills and treat it. We always get better and we're always about self-development. So time to find, if you ever looked up time in the dictionary, it's got a multitude of definitions, right? So the best definition I could come up with was the measured and measurable period during which an action process or condition exists, continuous, or duration. Time is a capsule. Time is a commodity. No matter how rich you are, you only get so much time. No matter, Elon Musk gets the exact same 24 hours in the day that I did, right? And when I woke up, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I can get five hours of sleep tonight. That last night was less. Um, but why do you get up so early? And I always say what gets me out of bed is because if you're going to do the things that I'm going to do today and meet the people that I'm going to meet, you would get up early too. Okay, and that's my mindset because I want to get out there. I know that because I only have 24 hours, my time is valuable. So the best thing that I could give my technicians or my clients or my family is my time. You guys have given me an hour of your time today. You only got 24. Hours. So time is valuable. And now how can we get the most? out of that time. What's interesting about time is the way we view it is in a straight line. But we can only see back and learn from the past. We can only guess about the future, right? But everything we have is based on the future. We think about the future. We're always about the future. We're impulsive about the future. The time's hard to control. So, how many people know the jars? Pretty, pretty well known, right? So the jars represent day. Big rocks are like your major, major time and very important things in life. Then you have smaller rocks. Now stones are something that are rare. They take more than three hours, but they're important. Personal time, family time is the rocks. Then you've got smaller rocks, and to me, those represent anything that's 30 minutes, okay? And things that you control and you don't control. Meetings, meetings are rocks. And if you look in the jar, they're just kind of scattered all over the place. In sand are all those menial tasks that we do every day. And one thing, and step up here, so we talked about how you get all of this in a day. Well, you mix it. Right? You mix it in and it fits. Surround your rocks with sand. If you have a meeting that's an hour and it ends at how many times you're there, hey, I'm going to give you 30 minutes back. Right? And how many times does our schedule have absolutely nothing on it for that 30 minutes? Right? I'm going to show you how to have a backup to actually utilize that time that you get back. And then sand clusters together. So email is one of my favorite topics. All right. If you're checking your email all day long, people who communicate through email do not expect an immediate response. And if they do, they're wrong. You should pick however many times a day you need to check your email and stick to it. Put it on your schedule. Mine is six times a day. I check my email six times a day, and I'm an empty inbox kind of guy. I get 300 emails a day. I'm sure some of you get more. But during that time, my email box is empty. Okay? The jar, okay, that's the wrong way. So, stone events, they're large, unmovable objects in time. Projects, big project rollouts, they happen. You can't reschedule them, you can't really control them. But there is a choice, and it's yes or no. Do you have to be involved in every single little or big rock? Would you delegate? 
we talked about developing technicians as leaders and how I could delegate some of these big rocks to my technicians and they could handle them and take them off of my schedule, right? And then it's a much smaller rock for me, it's me. Look for a less time consuming option, okay? Just like I said, delegation. Now somebody else is actually doing the, 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 the work and I just need to be st strategic and manage. Now, rocks. Sometimes they're not your rocks. Okay, it's not your meeting. And you have to respect, respect that. Number one, do you bring value in being in that meeting? Your time is valuable. All right. How do you determine the value of your time? A lot of people say, what do I make an hour? That's not true. Because and from a company standpoint, you cost me more than what I'm paying you now. I gotta keep the lights on. I gotta pay for the space. Almost double what you make for hour. But also you have to put your own value on time. Okay. At what point is are you going to spend two days painting a house or just paying somebody else to do it so you can spend time with your family? You have to put value on your time. Time is a commodity. If you don't value your time, no one else will. Okay, you have to value your time. Yes or no, delegation. Do I have to be at this meeting? There's nothing wrong with saying it. There's nothing wrong with, with saying, hey, I'm tentative. If you need me, I'll be available, text me, and I'll jump in. But I'm not going to spend my time to study, right? And I don't believe in multitasking in a meeting. If you're in a meeting, be in a meeting. Okay? Don't be on the Zoom call trying to do this because you're messing somebody else's rock up when they say Sean and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the question. What was that? Okay? You're messing up somebody else's rock. Respect the owner. You're a participant. I'm type A. Okay? I am type A. I'm uh, I am actually very introverted, so this is painful for me. I'll be exhausted this evening. But respect the owner of the meeting. It's their meeting. Don't take over. Let them go through. Make sure that whatever you say is actually providing value. Okay? No context and be prepared. Hey, you, may, you, you schedule a meeting with me. Uh, sometimes they're not going to give you an itinerary. You have no idea what they're going to talk about, right? But they want data. And you could change what would have been three meetings to one by saying, what can I bring to this meeting? What are you going to ask of me? And that also helps you identify, is this a valuable meeting for me? Or is it an email? Well, if you could just give me the reports for yada, 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 is that all you need from me here? You don't need me in this meeting. So it's okay to say, hey, what are we talking about? What's going on in this meeting? Stay on topic. One thing I I can't stand is when meetings end early and there's like, hey, do you guys want to talk about something else? Is there something else? No, 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 no. That's a whole other meeting. Okay, it's great to work together, but stay on topic. This is what we're meeting about. Don't open it up because this will be that without talking about your weekend, right? And you're losing time. Number two, don't interrupt. You know, um, oh, this is the next one. When we cover whoops, dyslexia, is a bear. Your rocks. Own your rocks. Set proper time. What's the default for a meeting? One hour. Right. You ever set a 45 minute meeting or 15 minute meeting? How many meetings don't go 30 minutes They go 50? Let me give your time back. No, you didn't. You filled my calendar. Right? True, set the time, know what you're going to talk about. It's okay to do a 15 minute meeting. Okay? It's okay to do a five minute touch point and to say, hey, this is my itinerary. These are what we're going to talk about. Five minutes and we're done. So create and set an itinerary. It's important. Okay? It is important to have an itinerary. To say, hey, here's what we're going to talk about, and after that, we finish. 
because now the other person is going to bring that information to you or they can make the decision, is this valuable? Or can I just provide you with data? Know what results you need and record future actions requested. Okay. Another thing about itinerary, and this is something that drives me crazy, is when somebody goes, you know, there's something else. There's something else I wanted to talk to you about. And I just can't think of what it was. I hate to call it such a bad word, but that's incompetence. You know, now you're wasting my time on something that wasn't even important enough for you to know. Right? Don't start until everybody's present, and that's a challenge sometimes because you've got that person, and, and usually the main person doesn't show up to five to minutes. But to be honest with you, you have to recap everything you were talking about because they're the important person. So don't start until everyone's well, out, out there. Set proper time 15 minutes, only choose necessary attendees. For the reason you have to respect their time, but also the more people you bring in, the more interruptions, the more discussions, keep it narrow. Maintain command and control. Don't lose control of your meeting. Because where you're being respectful in somebody else's meeting, you're not taking over, you're not allowed, you're, you're not allowing interruptions, you will have those people. And you've got to identify. When I talk about command and control, have we heard about a little thing called parking lot? It's a real thing and you should have it. Because somebody's always going to bring up something that's a little off topic. You say, hey, you know what? That's important. We need to address that. But right now, we're going to move that into the parking lot. We'll set something up later for that. But let's stay on track. Okay? And it's important to write it down because you have to get back to that person on that parking lot. More owning your rocks. Your rocks are important. Cancel a meeting if priorities change, okay? Be on top of your meetings. If things happen, like you're not prepared for the meeting, don't have the meeting, okay? Or if circumstances change where the meeting is no longer required, it can be an email, cancel it. Be respectful of other people's time. Verify technology in the room, another pet peeve of mine. How many times were, oh, shoot, I'm trying to get this out. Uh, that this work. Because right now we rely so heavily on technology, Zoom and everything else. Verify that technology. It, honestly, I show up 15 minutes early to any meeting, and if I can get the technology going, then I can spend time on my SAM, right? I can spend time on my emails, and I'm prepared. Keep round, the SAM track have a plan, keep round table to the meeting on a table, <laughs> stay away from sidetracks. It's okay for, for somebody to bring up a sidetrack, the parking lot, right away. Okay, because we're at round table, we're trying to move on, we're trying to end the meeting. Recap your results to make sure everybody's on the same page right before you leave. Okay, listen, this is what we covered. The, this is what I need from you. This is what I'm going to do for you. This is when you're going to have that available for me. This is when I'm going to have this available to you. Are we on the same page? Because then there's no confusion and your meeting had purpose. If you just verify it. The meeting is over when it's over. Sometimes it goes long, most of the time it goes fast. Try to end on time and try to end early. Always never try to end late. So if it's a huddle, right? A huddle is completely different. I have five minute huddles in the morning with all my leaders. No one is allowed to sit down. Because the moment that you sit down, we're having a conversation. If we're standing, we're recording, and we're moving on. Okay? So sometimes huddles, you keep people from sitting down. You ever have a salesman come into your office and it's an interruption at the end of it, and you can't get them to go on no matter how you try. You know what I do? I give it a little time, then I walk to the door, and I hope they follow. And if they don't, I leave. And I just leave them sitting there. And I go, go on and do my thing. And eventually they go away. So, but trust me, it, it sounds like a jerk thing. I've given them enough notice that I have things to do. Okay? 
But once again, that should be value in your time. Sand. Group these things into blocks of time. Later on, I'll show you my calendar so you can see how to group sand. Okay? Allow them to be tentative so they can surround your rocks. Okay? So I have tentative operational time. I have tentative database maintenance time. I have tentative financial review time, which my meetings overlap. So when that meeting gets canceled or ends early, I go right to my sand. I know what I'm doing. And it's tentative. It doesn't have to be done today. It just has to be done in a group, right? Utilize hacks. Like hacks, you love. Love them, and that's part of that trip, right? Shortcuts, continuous improvement, and technology. You know, one of my favorite things is when I try to talk to people about time management, like there's a, there's a time tracking sheet that's a total bear. It's really useful to do for a day or for a week to get an idea of where you're spending time, but it takes a lot of labor. And somebody will say, listen, I don't have time for that. You don't have time for time management, right? Or I, I'm a big Excel guy, you know, and I always, my wife, I was, hey, check this out. Check what I can do in Excel. And her thing is, I don't know Excel. I was like, but why? You know, all the wonderful things that Excel can do to make your life better. But that's about self-improvement and mastering your own skill. Because guess what? That person who's not telling you, that leadership that's not telling you anymore how to manage your time, they're also not telling you how to develop yourself. And that's not, you know, I guess there's good leadership where we lean down, but sometimes at a certain level, it's no longer there. It's our responsibility. So, remember I said I steal a lot, but I create a little. So, this is the fourth level to the rocks in the jar for me. It's water. When you pour water into the jar, it saturates it. And what water is, is our perception of time. We were in the, uh, like I said, the uh, virtual reality where we talked about the compression of time. There are different things that change the way we perceive time. Now, we don't make more time. That's impossible. 24 hours, that's what we got. But you can, if you're aware of this, you can enrich your time. And I'll tell you some of the things, very wise, that, that, that do this. So time perception is affected by a ton of stuff. And we'll break each one down. First of all, age, memory of time, and health. So this is actually what is referred to as the proportional theory. So the proportional theory says, hey, if I have a one-year-old and he turns two, now time moves very slow because one year is half of his life. But when I turn 60, one year is one sixtieth of my life. So that's why my perception, my memory of time as I get older, it seems much short. But it's not true. It's not true because it's actually about novelty. When you're young, you're experiencing first, first steps, first experiences. And the way your brain tracks time and perception is information. So if you're in a car accident and everybody says time slows down, it slows down. It's because your brain is firing all cylinders and information is just coming. Health affects your perception of time. Being healthy, energetic, actually helps you perceive and utilize time better than if you're sick and not doing it. Things that also affect time emotion. Now, here's the problem. Good times, blah, blah. Bad boy times, last breath. So, Am I telling you just be measurable? And you have all the time to put your own hat. No. But you need to be aware that when you're happy, your perception of time is just shifting the fast forward. Because there's other things to help you move your perception back to really enjoy those times, those weekends. When you come back to work on Monday, and you're like, what do you do? And what you have to do 
is increased novelty, increased awareness. So when you're with your families, put your phone down. Hear, see, smell. I was thinking about this yesterday when I was pouring over my notes, sitting in the casino, and I leaned back and I just took in all the noise, all the lights, everything. When you do that, you change your perception of time. And you're in the moment. You're not in an email. You're with the most valuable part of your time, which should be with your family. Attention, once again, put down the cell phone. When you're not at work, you're not at work. I know. Sometimes we have to be connected, but we control that. Okay? There's certain things that I respond to, there's certain things I don't. But your actual perception of time will improve. Other things that affect time is volume. So an hour is a capsule. You can do so many things within an hour of time. For example, we talked about sand. Sand doing emails, me developing six capsules on my schedule that are 15 minutes each. Now I can look at density. I can pack as much emails into that 15 minute period as possible and I have high density, which changes time perception. And number two, fulfillment. I get fulfillment when my inbox is empty. I get fulfillment when I get to that 15 minutes and I've accomplished that tax six times a day instead of chasing that dragon the whole day long, right? Also complexity affects how we perceive time. H higher complexity drags time out. Enjoyment, short this time. Novelty, new things expands time. So take your loved ones and go do something you've never done before. It'll enhance your perception of time on the way to answer your free time. So why? Slowing down the perception of time does not allow us to accomplish more. It doesn't. So they did a study where people were bungee jumping and they timed how long it would take them to go from here to here and said, okay, I want you to count seconds. And you tell me what you think. So it actually took 1.5 seconds and they got everywhere from three seconds to four seconds. Because time perception, they were firing all cylinders and they had a longer perception. Then they attached a watch. And this watch would fire a sequence of numbers faster than they could see. And they wanted them to watch the watch as they jumped to see if because their brain was firing so fast, would they be able to see the numbers that they typically couldn't? Did time actually slow down, even in our minds? It didn't. They still couldn't make the numbers. So, time perception doesn't give you more time. It enriches the time you have. And you start thinking about every moment of your life from a, from a position of perception. And when the more important times when you're home with your family, or when you're picking up that cell phone for no reason, you put it back down and you live the time that you're in. So be aware of your perception of time will allow you to bring more value to your day. Be aware of perception can help you enrich your time at work, but most importantly, enrich your free time. So there was a quote. When you understand the value of time, the resource and the wealth of time, you will run away from the crowd and you will run away from distraction. I deleted Facebook because it was a waste, because my time was way more valuable than Facebook. And that completely separates me from the crowd. Because it's a the social world, meta, metaverse, right? And I started looking at my my world as eliminating as many distractions as possible. So I, I avoid them. Too much to do. God, I love it. Too much to do. So let's talk about too much to do. How many people utilize to do this? Great. 
What kind of like this paper? Are we using paper? Okay. It doesn't matter what you use, you need a to-do list. Okay, as simple, I, I used to have a brick of wood that had a little slot in it, and I take an index card every every morning and I would put it in there and I would develop my need to do list for the day. Right? And as things developed for the day, I wrote them down. Well, now I've moved to an app, which I use, right? But there's a couple things when it comes to doing your to-do list. Always do the ugly one first. The one thing you don't want to do. Do it first. Okay. The app that I use, if you guys read, is actually Trello. It's an amazing app. It's a project management app that is super fluid that goes from PC, you can do to-do list in it. It's amazing. Shameless plug. What's your number one? Always ask yourself, what's my ugly that I have to do first? But what's the number one most important thing that I have to get done today? And do it. Make sure it gets done. If you do that one big deal thing per day, that's five big deal things per week. And as leaders, if we're holding one-on-ones with our technicians and our leaders and not asking that question of them, hey, what's your number one day? What's your number one thing you have to get done today? What's the one thing? And then you say, how can I help you with that? Because now I'm not just accomplishing five big things per week. I'm accomplishing 10, 15, however many people I have on a meeting. Because I make sure they get their one. So what do you do if you can't control your own time? What do you mean? What I mean is special project prompt comes up yeah. and, the person, and I've had where I get answer done yep. because of that and made that point known yes. that I got up and done. Um, you know, interaction came up and I still got held for it because you needed me to done because you had your else. So every once in a while, that stuff's going to happen. We know the nature that we're in. Or it's, it's common for us. Well, <laughs> <laughs> then, then you've probably got a, a um, we'll you call it, you probably need more labor. I mean, you guys, you know, or you need to throw up some guardrails, right? And that's one of the more challenging things is is not getting, because we're, we're the biomedics, we're good, we do it all, right? So, and sometimes leadership has to be able to say no, or they need to properly prioritize what's important, right? Because that's no way for you to work. If, if you can't control your own time because somebody else isn't controlling your workflow for you, that's an issue. I wish I could fix leadership, but sometimes, but, but you, the thing is, no matter what, and this is not like, hey, Sean's way of doing things is be perfect for you, right? This is something, if you find one or two things that work in here that trim a little bit of time for you, if, if it takes a little bit of anxiety away, if instead of leaving at 8 o'clock, you're leaving at 7.30 and 7 o'clock, then it's, it's worth it, right? Because honestly, you guys, we do control our own time to a certain point. And I still look at all that I'm teaching it. I can guarantee you I don't go by this all the time. And we'll get into uh, this kind of decision-making process uh, for time, but completely get it. Because there's, there's days they drop a bomb, and yeah, my biggest business plan is done, right? But that's really important why you take that one thing. Because for me, if I have a junk day, I will still stay to do that one thing. That's my one thing. It was important to me. I'm not saying important to the organization. It's important to you. So you can walk out the door feeling that you did your one thing that meant something to you. And it doesn't need to be huge. It can just be what you had that. So one win. All right. Yeah. I, I, I think 
And it, it's kind of fluff time, right? Fluff time. And I actually have fluff time every day. Every day I have fluff time. And I call it, you know, because other people see my calendar, I think I've got like deep five or something like that for about an hour and a half. And people think I'm totally set life, right? But really, that's my flex time. And that's when I have those emergencies that people throw on me. I know I've got about an hour and a half that I can donate to it without screwing up my schedule. But I do understand that sometimes it's even worse than that. Let's talk about prioritization. So we talked about this earlier in one of the new technician classes. And we never really teach technicians prioritization. We just expect them to know, right? And really, the best thing I can say is if you've ever seen the four, the four square quadrant where your, your upper left, and I should have a slide at all, uh, your upper left is this is this is high impact has to be done right now, right? Thank you. Next square over is high impact doesn't need to be done right now. Then low impact has to be done right now. Low impact doesn't have to be done right now. So believe it or not, having that on a nice dry race is a great way when your day goes to yeah. To sit there and say, where am I with this? And what's also amazing about it is when you start seeing things falling into that fourth quadrant of its low impact and doesn't need to be done right now, you start realizing that those things don't matter. 20% makes up 80% of 20% of what we do is 80% of our business, right? So I guarantee you that one quarter doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And you can start looking at improvement of how can I get rid of this? Can I delegate it away? It's not something that deserves my time. Okay. All right. Lead. Leader, your own work calendar. If it is a mess, you have only yourself. It's your calendar. Okay. And some people will think my camera is a mess, but it works. First thing, what I do when I open Outlook, it doesn't open to my email. It opens to my calendar. Because if it opened to my email, I would be distracted by my emails and I would never get to my calendar first. So there's actually a setting in Outlook where you can say open to my calendar first. That way I'm not distracted. Oh, I got different stuff, you know, because it's a rabbit. So all well, uh, completely up to you, but I always open my calendar first. Yes. yes. So and it's it's actually under Outlook Options, Advanced, and Outlook Start and Exit. We'll start a calendar. Yep. So so this is my my calendar. Okay, long time ago. So I color code my camera. Here you see my tentative. This is my sand. Okay, so when a meeting comes in, it falls over my sand. If this ends early, I know I'm doing this. Okay, your calendar cannot start until it's done. So I used to be a military recruiter, it was a very stressful life. Okay, and I had to be at high schools, at colleges, eating dinner with parents at night. It was really rough. But I always, my, this week was scheduled. I reviewed one week. I was two weeks planned. This week was solid. It was set. Next week was planned. Months were planned. Yearly were planned. Okay. You know you can delay email? You know that it's an option. When I have people come to me, I've got a, a, a Sigma pump recall going on, and I know I need to send out a communication, a communication on this day, this day, this day, this day, this day. When I'm thinking about it, I write all those emails right now, and I delay them to deliver on those days 
So at seven o'clock in the morning, they sent on those specific days. Okay, now you have to remember, you got to turn on your Outlook. That I, had. I actually moved to a new computer and didn't use my old one for a year. And I plugged it in and turned it on. And people started getting emails from like a year ago. It's like, <laughs> so, these are important as well. These are reminders and good ways to communicate to people, especially if you cover multiple sites. Hey, I'm, I'm at Rush. I'm going to be at Rush in the morning at Hyde Park in the second half. This is good ways to communicate to people. You know, I have leadership who wants to know where I am and when I am. So I just share my family. So this is where I get very complex. So I prioritize all of my calendars. So I can group the sand, right? So if it's something that is database time that's yellow, actual waiting input, and so there's different categories here. Some are for email, some are for scheduled events, okay? Or, or I am very religious about how this goes together. So I can look and just know by color what I do on my calendar. Now, these are also, these categories are important because, and of course, sand is tentative, right? So I always mark my sand tentative. That's important because the other people viewing my calendar, they don't see me as completely blocked, which is what that would typically show. They see that I have tentative time for that scheduled meetings. So quick tips, copy and paste the like emails or uh, copy and paste a like appointments. Okay, use your repeating, your invites, all that stuff. That's important. It's not scheduled. No, if it's not on your schedule, it's not a priority. So I don't know how many times people say, hey, you know what, we should talk about that. Or hey, hey, can you help me out with this? I'm doing my one-on-ones. What's most important to you right now today? Well, I need help with SPD. Let me put it on the calendar. You and me and the manager. Right now. If it's not on your calendar, it's not a priority. It needs to be on account. Now that you know what else makes that important is and you can't see it here, but I have family time down here. I have a movie night on my account because it's a priority. So if you're not putting the same priority of your personal life as you're putting on your work life, then it's not a priority. And you will not, you'll, you'll slip. You won't leave at 5 o'clock. You'll leave at 5.15. 5 o'clock, oh, never traffic, see you seven. Right? Make it a priority. It's your time. Set a week in advance and always review two weeks in advance. This is one of my biggest pieces of advice. Time is currency. Always in everything you do, Make an investment in time. Okay. So, for example, I mean, super easy example is making your lunch the night before. Make sure the productivity in the morning is better. You're making an investment in time. But think about everything you do. How can you make that an investment? So, if I send the same email every month, why don't I create a template so I don't have to rewrite it? Why don't I build it as a signature block? So I can just go through my signature block, say, hey, this is CNL email, boom, it's populated. That's an investment in time. If you invest in your future time, it pays off in the future. Now, the thing you want to stay away from is taking deductions out of your future time right now. My favorite, because I'm a horrible driver, is whenever I flip the guy off beside me to cut me off in Chicago traffic, and then he's in front of me. And I'm like, well, that was a deduction in time. He's going to drive as smooth as he can. And I should have been better about this, right? Or procrastination. I'm going to procrastinate because it gives me time right now. But I'm taking a deduction from time to time. And believe it or not, procrastination is expensive. Because it's overtime. It's FedEx overnight. It's, you know, it's taking a deduction of your time. So everything I do and, and I look at, is this an investment 
in my time versus production. And that's one thing that I can tell you, they're super micro changes that make a big difference in the overall picture in the way that you start to view your time. Master your tools and technology. It's amazing. I mean, we, we work in an industry where we have a Phillips monitor and we have the, our brave frontline clinicians who have not scratched the surface on how to use their equipment, right? They just know through one of the we forgot. Think about us. Think about your Outlook program. Think about your email program. Have you mastered it? It's one of the most important tools that we have to communicate with people. And it doesn't cost money to master your tools. We've got Google, we've got YouTube. Every night, I'm looking for one self-improvement. I want, you know, to uh, say, show me a hack into my email system and how to do things. And I learn those things, it makes me faster. So invest in your technology with time. And once again, me doing those things at night is me investing in my future time. So email, one of my favorite topics. So email was created to avoid distractions, right? So it was so, hey, I don't need to see you face to face. I don't need to call you. Why don't I send you an email? You handle this with your own time and you can get back to me. I'm gonna respect your time. But what happens when we get an email? You gotta check, right? So number one, email is email. It's that you don't need them, you got a different positive. But you don't need to do an immediate response to email. Pardon me or not, but I've got a, a hack that I love. I actually just learned this one about a week ago. Let's talk about a phone call. Somebody calls you, you don't answer the phone, they leave you a voicemail. Did you ever wonder what happens to the voicemail? Now it digitally prints out for you so you can read it, right? Isn't that an email? Did you ever think about taking your voicemail message and say, hey, Sean and I'm not available right now, but I'll tell you what, if this could be an email, my email address is sean.moy at trimedics.com, feel free to send me an email. And I will get voice messages. People are like, oh, well, this gets all the emails. And they send me emails. And, you know, and save, always save your contacts that are distractions, certain limits, right? So you can look at your phone and say, you, I'm going to let that go to voicemail where I'm going to tell you the shit. <laughs> right? So try to convert that over to, to voice, uh, to become an email. Email tips. They don't require an immediate response. Check during set periods of time. And utilize technology. Now, when I talk about utilizing technology, this is all theory. Once again, this is Sean's way of doing things. Your way may be different. I used to have all kinds of folders. Love it. I got to break stuff down. It was not productive. I have four folders. Requires action. Need to read. Requires approval. And archive. I never delete an email. Doesn't happen. No. Approval is PO approval, work order approval. I have a filter built that automatically, if it says, it you know, just becomes from a certain email, it goes into that folder, it's unread, and I see bing, one. And I see bing, two, three. And then I have my block time where I approve my approvals. So during that block time, I go in, I view my cell phone, and just say, okay, go approve, 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 think, think, think. And I'm doing the one thing that technicians love to do, and it's chase the zero, right? Chase preventive maintenance down to zero. Chase repairs down to zero. I'm chasing myself down to zero. My actions, I actually have built. Yes. Yes. Archive. Yep, archive. Yeah. Filtering. So, Move to action forward call. Oh, use rules for more than just filtering out junk, right? So my approvals, 
Give it to my approval, unread, bing, they're right there. We, there there's also what's called quick actions. Oh, here's a little hack. I don't know if everybody knows it, but I know it. So if you grab an email from your list when you're at email and you drag it over to contact and you drop it, it automatically creates a contact for you. If you grab it and you drag it over to your calendar icon, it automatically creates an event that attaches to email and you guys can schedule meetings. So that quick movement, you know, just another one of those little, little hacks. So for example, here's the MV Expo. I drug this over to my calendar so I can sit, say that specific time. But then in that time, I've got my itinerary right here. It was done for me. So, okay. I use this a lot. So I use signatures as email templates. Okay. So if I have a CNL email that I sent, I say thing, right? And actually this one, I think I utilized one here. So this is, hey, I missed you on rounds today. So I would always round, go see my managers. If they're busy, I never interrupted, I waved and I kept going, right? But I always made a note that when I got back to my desk, I would send them an email and say, hey, I stopped by. So it was as quick as me just changing my signature to have that message sending to each person. So using signature as template when you're sending the same email on your time again. This is my secret. This, and this is what kept me from quitting. Action tools. So your quick steps. Okay. When I have my email time, I'm not taking action. I'm filtering my emails. So if it's something where I can do a quick response and I'm done and I can archive it, I'll it. But if it takes an action that takes more than two minutes, I have a button that says action. And it's divided into an action urgent action routine. It moves it to my action folder. It assigns an urgency to it. And then my action folder goes one, two, three. And that's my operational time that I'm going to get there. So those little blocks where I'm handling emails, I'm sorting. You go here, you go here, your trash, your archive, empty inbox, right? And I have to have an empty inbox. My wife knows I have an empty inbox. I will have a bad day and my wife will say, you probably need to go empty inbox. Okay. So that's how I get things done. Now, this is a theory that might work differently for you. Some people like to use their inbox as a to-do list. I, I don't think that way. Okay, I just like to fill out my inbox, get everything separated. Now I know what I'm doing with my day. Okay, and I can get to those items. There, if you ever want to know how to set action, uh, quick actions, there's great videos on, on YouTube that'll help you with the rules, and it does some extraordinary things. And it's one click to do four or five things. So this speeds up. Phones, plan your phone calls. I do one time. Important calls, have a plan, consider signal strength. Nothing drives me crazy than being in the elevator and losing connection or being in the basement. Stick to the point. I always say, hey, it's Sean, I'm calling you here. There's three things that I want to take care of in this phone call. All right, and then I'm off the phone. It seems quick, but my time is back. Okay. Don't multitask when you're talking on the phone. Don't multitask. If you want to be there, be there. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to get all the information and you're not, not being 100% productive. If it's not important, it's an email. Limit frequency and durations. Don't put your feet up. I like the same one. I don't sit. If I put my feet up, it's going to be a long phone call. Know your hacks. We all have databases, right? And they're probably web based. Did you know utilizing your control key? If you hit a hyperlink, let's say you have a list of work orders, hold your control key, hit each one of the hyperlink, it opens a new window for each one. You can go up to like 50 windows. Then you can copy and paste real quick, use control W to scroll through your tabs and put that in. Then control W again to close the work orders real quick and then close it up. Okay. I 
because I figured out how to use Chrome and to utilize those shortcut keys, my finger is always on the control button because it, it speeds up. I'm able, it used to take me 30 minutes to close 200 work orders. And now I can do it in roughly 10 minutes. Just by quick, you don't have to move your mouse around. You can stay in one spot. Excel, I love Excel. Who knows what control E is? Raise your hands if you know what control E does. Do you know control E is the most powerful shortcut in Excel? It really is. So let's say we've got first name, not in the proper format, not capitalized. We've got last name, we've got the last four, we've got a phone number in an incorrect format. I want this. If I move the cursor to here and hit control E, it will look for a pattern and it will repeat the pattern all the way down. And it will do as much as first initial last name. It'll put dashes in a phone number. And this is a quick way to do data adjustment. You export to Excel, it's always easy to, to work with. Control E. It's basically, I like to call it AI. It is. And if, it's, if it doesn't see enough pattern, you might have to do two lines. But after that, it'll do a thousand lines for you following that pattern. Very powerful tool. Pivot tables. If you don't know pivot tables, pivot tables are awesome. Okay. This is actually, let's see what I was looking for. I was looking at a comparison of high priority to routine to staff work orders over a four year period. And I was able to produce this in two minutes. Where if I were to just try to work in the database, right? So I'm gonna have to do this. If you don't know pivot tables, look it up on YouTube. They're super easy. Waste management, be aware of and manage your time waste. Seriously. If you're okay with it, be okay with it. But I talked about actually doing like a time asset sheet where you said, I did this much time, I did this, I did this, I did this. You'd be amazed if you just do it for a day or a week, what you actually waste. And you can trim that out. But know your waste, eliminate it. And when can you have to pass when you're on hold, right? But that's what the sand is about. You always have something that you could be doing and prioritize. And stay away from distraction. Four distractions, five distractions is one hour of your day. Guaranteed. So know how to manage those distractions. As a manager, my door is always open. As a director, my door is always open. I'm getting distractions from the clinical staff. I'm getting distractions from the technicians. That's my job, a resource, right? But how can I minimize the impact of that distraction? Hey, I would, hey Sean, can you help me with this? Hey, listen, bud, listen, I, my fluff time, you know, between 12 o'clock and call office hours, but why don't you come back and we'll put you on the schedule. I'll send you an invite. Five minutes, we'll get together to handle this. Why is that better than doing it right now? Because if I stop what I'm doing to handle that distraction, it takes time to get back to where I was. But I'm putting it on the calendar because it's a priority. And the technician enjoys it as a priority. They, they think you're taking as well, are taking care of. Okay, final thought. I share these theories with you guys, not so you can become more productive, not so you can produce higher volume, but so you can go home at final thought. So you can be with your family. So you can enhance the time that you have with your family. And, you know, when, when I talk to people and I hear, oh, well, you know, I can't do management now because I just have a baby or, or you know, I, you know, I, I had to choose between my wife and work. No, you didn't. You didn't. So this isn't about making you more productive or more volume. It's about you going home and not quitting two months into the job. Like, I almost did. And two years later, became a director. So, any questions?